The sixth mass extinction on Earth is happening right now. Can we stop it or is it already too late? There have been five mass extinction events which wiped out almost all life on Earth, called the Great Five. So there are two types of extinctions, background extinctions and mass extinctions. Background extinction refers to the normal extinction rate that happens to animals in nature over time. When this normal background extinction rate is accelerated over a very short period of time to where new species aren't able to replace them quick enough, this is called a mass extinction. These catastrophic events can be due to things like volcanic activity, toxic oceans and atmospheres, rapid climate change, life-ending meteors, the change of Earth's orbit, and a very new reason, human activities. So to have any type of extinction, we need to have life. Life started on Earth about 3.7 billion years ago, which we know by analyzing carbon molecules produced only by living things and 3.7 billion year old rocks. Life in the oceans flourished for over 3 billion years without interruption. And then, between a billion and 700 million years ago, the first plants and fungi evolved on land. However, 443 million years ago, at the end of the Ordovician period, this new life on land cooled the planet and set forth a massive ice age that lasted nearly a million years and caused the first mass extinction event, which wiped out 85% of all species on Earth. So we know our first mass extinction event was caused by rapid global climate change. We also know that the global warming happening to the planet right now is far more severe than anything that's ever happened beyond a cataclysmic event. The global climate change happening now is due to a very new cataclysmic event called man-made fossil fuel emissions. So after the first extinction happened, it created the conditions for more plant life to emerge on land, specifically trees. This boom of plant life stretched 90 million years into the late Devonian period and made global CO2 levels plummet. The root systems of these new trees also caused Earth's soil to erode into the ocean, and the oceans lost most of their oxygen. This caused the second mass extinction, which wiped out up to 80% of all life on Earth. So we know from the second mass extinction that when oceans lose their oxygen, Oxygen, mass extinction occurs. If our planet had lungs, as of 2023, it's lost 30% of its lung capacity since only 1990. Our oceans get over 40% of their oxygen and nutrients from a network of ocean currents, which are partially fed by deep ocean Antarctic currents, which as of 2023, have slowed by 30% and are expected to slow by another 10% by 2025. Eventually, these currents will completely come to a halt. We are currently on our way to an oxygenless ocean, which will cause a mass extinction in the very same conditions as the late Devonian mass extinction event. Now let's fast forward 100 million years into the end of the Permian period, when the third mass extinction occurred, known as the Great Dying. This is the most severe mass extinction that's ever occurred on Earth, and it wiped out up to 96% of all species on the planet, including insects, which typically don't die out during mass extinctions. During that time, there's a series of volcanic eruptions in Siberia, Russia, that caused the planet to become intoxicated. It caused a condition in the ocean known as Euxinia, where there were low levels of oxygen and high amounts of hydrogen sulfide that spewed out into the air, mixed in with high CO2 levels and methane in the atmosphere. The planet was so toxic that there were no forests for five and a half million years and no reefs in the ocean. You may ask, how do we know how many animals and plants actually died out? And how do we know how severe the extinction really was? Well, let's put it this way. The layers of rock in the Permian period had an abundant, magnificent display of fossil records of the animals at that time. But when we look at the Triassic layers, there's virtually no fossil record. That indicates how severe the mass extinction was at the time. So it took thousands to millions of years for the animal and plant life to recover after this cataclysmic event. And it took the planet 100 million years for its toxicity levels to go back down to normal. But only 50 million years into its recovery, at the end of the Triassic period, unfortunately the fourth mass extinction happened, called the Triassic Extinction Event. Well, it wasn't unfortunate for everyone. This extinction event is the one that allowed the dinosaurs to become the dominant land animals on Earth. The Triassic extinction was caused by similar conditions as the Permian extinction, but the difference is, during this time, the supercontinent Pangaea started to break apart into separate continents. As North America separated from Africa and the Atlantic Ocean began to form, volcanic activity arose, the oceans and atmospheres became toxic again, and global warming occurred. So there is something important to note about this extinction event. 
Not all scientists want to call this a single mass extinction, but rather an extremely high turnover of species over a considerable amount of time. Meaning the background extinction rate of this time period was extremely high compared to normal, but over many, 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 many millions of years, which technically is not a mass extinction event. So we see similarities in the extinction patterns and rise in CO2 levels of this event compared to what is happening right now. Only the CO2 levels rising now are happening significantly faster over a much short period of time, and they're caused by humans, not volcanoes. So over the next 140 million years into the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, life got the chance to flourish. Many new species emerged for the first time like grass, flowers, and famously, dinosaurs. The planet was finally at a beautiful balance. But then, toward the end of the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago, the most famous and the fifth mass extinction event happened. The extinction of the dinosaurs except birds, which technically are living dinosaurs. So what caused the extinction this time? It was the Chicxulub asteroid, which was nearly one trillion tons of three mile wide rock that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and left a hole 12 miles deep and 100 miles wide. The impact kicked up dust in the atmosphere that encircled the planet, preventing sunlight from entering, which prevented plants and plankton from photosynthesizing, causing 76% of all life on the planet to become extinct. Fortunately for us, this extinction event allowed fungi to arise which helped with the emergence of mammals, who have dominated land ever since. Since this meteor, the background extinction rate of mammals has been 1 in 1,000. However, right now, that background extinction rate is over a thousand times what it was. Not only this, but recent reports have found that species are dying out hundreds of thousands of times faster in only the last 10 million years. So typically what happens when planetary changes occur that make animals go extinct, there's supposed to be other species that adapt and evolve to these conditions, and speciation happens, where they're recategorized into a new species, and these new species take the place of the species that died out. However, that is not happening right now. New species are not emerging at rates that they should be. We are, in fact, in the sixth mass extinction event. So, what do all these extinctions have in common? Well, they have either low or very high levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. We know that the quicker CO2 levels rise and fall, the more rapid climate change occurs, which means animals have to adapt. And when animals can't adapt quick enough and species begin dying out higher than the background extinction rate, this is a clear indicator that mass extinction is occurring. So, confession, um, I actually haven't been being truthful with you about something. There have not been five mass extinctions. There have actually been over 20 mass extinctions. It's just scientists don't want to classify all of them as a mass extinction event, similar to why they classified the Triassic extinction as an extinction event, even though technically um, it was a, just a very high background rate of extinctions over a long period of time. One example of this is an event that happened 56 million years ago called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, where there was a massive carbon release into the atmosphere that lasted 20,000 years and it caused global temperatures to rise six degrees Celsius for nearly 200,000 years. This caused a mass extinction of marine life on the ocean floor. However, as much damage as it did to the planet, it did happen over a long enough period of time that a lot of species could adapt and didn't die out. One example is crocodiles. They adapted to actually live in the Arctic regions. So yes, we can see that global climate change is a natural thing that happens throughout time. It's happened many times. The only difference between global climate change that occurs naturally and global climate change that occurs due to mass extinctions is the intensity of the change and how long that change takes. The global warming that happened during the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum happened over hundreds of thousands of years, whereas the global warming that's happening now due to human activity is not happening over thousands or millions of years, but over tens of years. Our sea levels are rising rapidly. Glaciers are melting at rates that threaten our planet. The Arctic ice has melted to one third of its size from the last model only 20 years ago. Our oceans are asphyxiated and the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are dangerously high. We're combating this crisis by trying to implement things such as reduced energy usage through LED bulbs, reduced fossil fuel emissions, and genetically modified foods. However, soon these implementation methods will not be enough. We will reach the point 
where the efforts of what we're doing will be surpassed by the rate of planetary changes, which will accelerate our global mass extinction. And this is happening very soon, much sooner than a lot of people probably realize. In fact, there's scientists who believe that we will start to feel this mass extinction within the next hundred years. As for stopping this sixth mass extinction, it's already too late. We can't stop this magnificent force of nature. All we can do is ensure the survival of our species by creating better technology, fast, and to aim for the stars, literally. Our future is very unsure. If you were to fast forward in time and look back at the geology of our last 10,000 years on Earth, you'll see species like saber-toothed tigers, giant bison, and dire wolves, which all became extinct in a very short period of time, similar to the rapid extinction of species we see today. According to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, more than 42,100 species living now may go extinct by 2050, which is about one-third of all species on Earth. It may seem far-fetched that we're in a mass extinction because we wake up every day, look outside, go to our jobs and everything seems normal. We don't see meteors crashing down, volcanoes erupting, or acidic oceans like previous mass extinctions. But make no mistake, we are not okay. Mass extinction can happen over a day or can happen over 2.8 million years. We are living in a very dangerous moment on planet Earth. The only thing we can do is to make the world aware of what's happening, either through liking this video or subscribing to the channel to get future updates. That was my little plug, by the way. And we need to aim for the stars. We need to build a mothercraft spaceship that we can live on to basically bring home throughout the entire cosmos. Then we'll never have to worry about mass extinction again.